Hi everyone and welcome to this time lapse of my giant pastel painting of Port Rush Harbour. It's a town on the north coast of Ireland that I'm particularly fond of and I've spent much of my childhood there. So I hope you enjoy seeing the progression. If you haven't already, please do subscribe to me here on YouTube. Or if you'd like in-depth tutorials in real time, check out my Patreon channel. Enjoy the progress. So I'm straight in with the background and I build up the blue gradient of the sky first. It takes me a long time on this scale of a painting. It's 40 inches wide. So I spend a whole day just building up the blues in the sky into a nice smooth gradient coming down to the lighter area at the horizon. Then it's on to a very long line of detailed fiddly buildings. And between using the soft pastels and the pastel pencils, I spend quite a long time on each little building. I'm not too concerned if windows are really precise, but I did make sure to count all the windows in the buildings because I just know that someone will live in one of the buildings and point out that I haven't got the windows right. So I spent ages mapping it all out And I get maybe three or four buildings done per day, spending maybe five or six hours on that. So it's very laborious, very time consuming. And I'm also using some tiny shards of pastel. So you can get a lot of detail with the big pastel sticks. I'm a big fan of soft pastel. I love the pastel pencils. I do make use of them a lot but you can never get the same strength of colour as you can with the soft pastels. So I'm a big fan of snapping them into smaller pieces and using those tiny shards to get small details. And I seemed to be quite clumsy throughout this painting as I kept dropping bits of pastel, but it served me well as every time I dropped one I ended up with about four or five new sharp edges which came in very useful. So the buildings over on this side of the harbour are totally in shadow. It's really fun just to pick out those gable ends with the bright highlight on them with the sun's heading. But it's all about looking at the other values in comparison to your brightest values. I'm almost always surprised at how dark I need to go with a colour. And it was quite tricky to film this piece, it's so big and I decided to tape this to my wall in the studio. I don't have an easel this size, but I quite like working standing up. So I taped it up on the wall and that worked really well. I've done a few of these 40 inch wide pieces now and they're always a bit of a marathon. I just have to be prepared at the beginning that it's going to take a long time and it looks like a small amount of progress each day. But the further along you get, the more satisfying it is to come to it each day and add a little bit more. But I really just treat buildings like I would anything else. I'm just looking for colour and shape and value. A lot more sharp edges, of course, on buildings than I'm used painting on my animal portraits. But it's really nice to test out the pastels and just see how precise you can be with soft pastel. And coming soon on my Patreon channel, I'm going to do a full length video on this building that I'm starting now. I'm going to show you in real time how I built up the building and then later on its reflection in the water below. Oh, 
Hopefully I can share a few neat tricks to make painting buildings seem a little less daunting. But the most important thing in everything that I paint, I think, is value. And you're always looking for shadow and light. So in the case of the buildings, I'm looking for those fronts of the houses that are really catching the light. And in sharp contrast to that, you get the dark gable end of the house, which is in shadow. And as we come around the harbour, the sun, which is over to the left, catches all the fronts of these buildings. So in contrast to the buildings over on the left, these ones are really lit up by the sunlight and it makes such a difference. This scene is so familiar to me. Um, I took this photo reference one beautiful autumn day out walking Brocky, my dog, when we lived in Portrush. And I think this view is one of the views from Ireland that's really ingrained in my memory. I've been looking at this place since childhood and little things change. I mean, I took this photo reference about nine or ten years ago. And actually one of the buildings in the scene had scaffolding on it at the time. So I did a quick Google Earth drive by to see what it looks like now. <laughs> It's pretty amazing that we can do that these days. Pretty useful too for me in this case. So I know that I'm reaching the end of the buildings along the horizon line, but I'm also aware that I'll have to paint them all over again in their reflections below. But reflections are something that I love to paint whilst I have to be really controlled and precise on these buildings up here, it's a lot more fun to paint them in their reflection as you can loosen up. I tried to look a lot at the Impressionist's work when I was trying to figure out how to paint water. And although I wouldn't say my work is Impressionistic, I definitely learned a lot from them about pushing colour values and making marks that aren't so uh, defined or sharp. And although I struggle to bring it into some areas of my work, Reflections is one place that I really love to loosen up a little. And there were a lot of very tiny details here with some cars and a man walking up the pier. Lots of little barriers and railings. And for those, I literally had to use the very sharpest piece of pastel. Some of the lines on this painting are literally as fine as I can go with a soft pastel. So it just took a lot of patience, a steady hand if I messed it up. The great thing with pastel is you can cover over and go again. And now on to the watery hourglass that is the bottom half of this painting. And I quickly block in some dark blues at the very bottom. I want that darkness to be really rich at the bottom of the painting, giving us the impression of being right on the surface of the water, but also making you feel like the water's really deep. And bit by bit, I work my way across. And there are a few tricks to painting, reflections. Just making sure everything lines up with the buildings above. Looking for the darkest areas in the buildings above and dragging that down into the water. 
But my best tip for painting reflections is to make sure you have your reflections nice and vertical. So if it's a straight building above the water, make sure that its reflection is also straight. But when you're making those marks to create the water, you'll actually be using little horizontal marks. If you can manage that, you'll get realistic reflections. But I'll go into a lot more detail than that over on my Patreon tutorial, where I'll show you in real time the full build-up of one of the buildings and its reflection. And it may well be one of the bonus videos that I release eventually onto YouTube, but the guys on Patreon are really the reason that I'm able to make all of these videos, and it's because of their support that I'm able to devote a lot more time to making these, so I hope to release a lot more on YouTube over the next year. But there's already hours worth of tutorials over on my Patreon channel if you'd like more in-depth tutorials with full narration and colour codes and also reference photos provided so that you can paint along if you want. So it starts to feel a little like the home stretch here. Although at this stage, I've still got about three full days work to do. This piece was built up over about two weeks and I worked some really long hours during that time. But I also took a lot of breaks. There's only so long I could stand looking at it. Uh, I had to keep stepping back from the piece walking away and looking at it from a distance, which is always helpful when you're working large. But also lots and lots and lots of tea breaks. Uh, I just had to keep walking away from this and taking breaks. And you can see in some areas that I'm just measuring up where the building lines are, making sure that I line it up correctly in the water. But I'm also trying to think of the surface of the water as a flat surface. And you can see some little ripples on the very top of the water which interrupt the building's reflections. But it's really a lot of fun to paint water. It's great training for your eye just to look at things in terms of colours and shapes and forget what they really are. If you can do that, if you can stop overcomplicating it and just see everything as simple shapes and colours and relate everything to each other. And that's what I find I'm doing here, just trying to see it in a more abstract way. And I'm also mindful that the colours in the reflections are often a little duller than the colours of the buildings themselves. And I'm getting close to the end now, just one last day's work on the pier and all those rocks. I hope you've enjoyed seeing the progression of this. If you know Portrush well, please don't sit counting windows. I don't want to hear if I've missed any, really. Um, but thanks very much for watching, and I'll be back very soon with lots more videos. Until next time, happy pastling. <laughs>